Hi you guys, it's Dave here from Muggles Brew Miniatures. Uh, today's video we're going to be painting a flesh eater course, specifically your ghouls and your crit horrors. So these are going to be batch painting techniques, which are going to be getting your models on the tabletop, ready for war in no time at all. So if you're looking to Golden Demon Standard, this isn't the video for you. But if you want the models on the battlefield nice and quick, then watch on. If you've liked this video, please do give us a like, please do subscribe, please leave a comment. It's really going to help spread the word out on YouTube, particularly as we're a fairly new channel. Um, yeah, so watch on, hope you enjoy, learn a few tricks. Over a Death Guard Green Spray Primer, we're now going to apply a shade, and here we're using Anthonian Camo Shade. It's a nice greeny browny one, so it gives some nice depth and a really good nice colour scheme for the Flash Eater's skin. As you can see, we're using a uh, medium shade brush and applying this quite liberally all over the whole model really at this stage. We're gonna pick out the others later so we don't have to worry about being too neat here. Um, one thing we do have to worry about though is pooling. So try and avoid that. The next bit we're gonna do is a technique called overbrushing, which is essentially like a wet dry brush. So I'm not using any tissue or palette or card to load up the dry brush, just getting a big brush, putting on some Nurgling green paint, and I'm using my hand. That way I can see how much moisture is on the brush and the bristles. So we want more of the paint to catch the model than we would with a dry brushing. We're gonna start with quite a textured area on the mini chat. So here we're using the arm, we've got all those fingers and the muscles, and then we're just gonna bring this over the whole the model so it's quite a messy technique even messier than your standard dry brushing which is why we're doing it nice and early before we've picked out any of the other details so as you can see we're just applying that over the whole miniature making sure we're getting all of those areas um, when the camera's in focus you can see that it's leaving some nice shadows in the recesses and leaving that lighter color on the raised areas there too and we're getting quite a good coverage of paint over the miniature which is a really nice way to apply your base coats over textured areas like this works great for fur as well and it's quite nice for things like space marine armor too they can see in there it's looking pretty sweet so make sure we get everything and we'll be ready for the next stage so next up we're going to go for a good old dry brush and this color we're using here is the iron right skin and as you can see we've got a bit of corrugated card here load up your dry brush with the paint and we use the corrugated card to take that off it's a very good texture it's very good at getting the um, moisture out the bristles keeping the pigment there I just you'd like to test my hand make sure there's not too much moisture there as well but with just enough for the dry brushing so I think we're loaded up I think we've got the nice texture and we're ready to go so again just bring this over the whole area and as we can see it's catching the very raised areas there so that's lighter than the Nurgling green so dry brushing has to be lighter than the previous colors for that to work so it catches the raised areas and it's going to add some nice definition to things like the raised muscles the uh, sinew there the fingers the cheekbones basically everything that's protruding from the skin i'm a real big fan of dry brushing we get a lot of reward for a little effort and it's a technique that some people frown on but look how great that looks nice and easy bish bash bosh job done <clears throat> nearly <laughs> a bit more to pick out <clears throat> And there we go that's the model all dry brushed and the skin looking pretty cool ready for the next stage so now we're going to start picking out some of the areas and um, we're going to start with the fur uh, so most of the models have the fur and we're going to use scaven blight dinge for this it's a really nice color is it gray is it brown i don't know but it's got that greeny gray browny hue to it and i think it looks great with the green skin that we've got here i'm um, just picking out the fur areas there too so we're starting on his back where the areas are quite large and here we are going to be a bit more careful try and avoid the skin areas we have got you can kind of feather it in a bit to blend in with the skin and make sure you get the merkins as well between the legs they're protecting their dignity from battle as well as other things and there we go just layer up the fur there so we get that nice contrasting color from the skin now the next bit is probably one of the most time consuming bits we've got but it is certainly worth taking your time with it there too so we are going to pick out all the bones and we're using a color one of my favorite colors a rakar flesh for this so it's kind of an off-white color it's not quite a bone color you could use other colors if you want if you've got some um yeah 
bone cross there to uh, yeah, use those, but I really like the uh, the rack off. But take your time. We want to avoid here getting the fingers and um, the hands. You really want to keep these skin green because there's been a few layers gone into getting that ready there too. Now with the flesh eaters, there's lots of small protruding bones that have been pierced through their skin. Um, decorations, they've got the teeth and the claws as well. This guy's dragging a whole skeleton along as well there too. So there really are a lot of bone areas, which is why this is going to be one of the most time consuming bits for us too. But all those piercings and the protrusions, they really help give the uh, flesh eater courts, the ghouls, well, most of the models in the flesh eater courts, to be honest, that character. So it's worth picking out. When that's done, we're going to pick out the wood now. So not a lot of them have got the wood. Uh, we are using the uh, dryad bark here and picking out the stake that's been pierced through his skin. So again, we want to avoid the fur and we want to avoid the flesh that's been pierced through. Uh, so yeah, just pick that out in dryad bark. And then where the wood's been sharpened, it's going to be lighter, where it's been cut. And we are going to use the Steel Legion Drab just to pick that areas out there too. So there's not a lot of wood. Some of your other models might be carrying weapons. So we can use this technique on those as well there too. But here, the sharpened bit, the stake, as well as the top bit where that's been cut in the Steel Legion Drab. Now we're on to the metallics and nice good old lead voucher here. So some of them have hooks carved through them, uh, protruding through the skin, hooked through them. This one's got a ring there as well. Some might have shackles. There's loads of cool little details there. Chains hanging off them as well. And just take your time, nice and neat, picking out the metallics there in your lead voucher. So when that's done, the next stage is any rocks that someone might be holding or weapons. It's a big tombstone for one of the uh, crypt horrors there too. We're just going to pick out in Mechanica Standard Grey. Again, taking the time around the fingers and the fur there too. Now a lot of them do have bandages, ropes and bits there as well. And we're going to use Grey Seer now, which is a nice light base paint to pick those out so it gives a really good coverage it's kind of an off-white so it's not as bright as white either which looks great for kind of dirty rotten bandages especially when we sh stick a shade over these a little bit later there too again though just take your time pick them out it's worth doing um, there's not a lot to these models as well although most of them do have some form of other or wraps around the hands but it's just worth taking your time picking those out we're using a um, medium layer brush here as well making sure it's got a nice point on and then picking out those bandages and the wraps. It's already starting to look cool as well there too. You can see all the different areas with the base colours up. So when we've got all of the areas picked out, which we should mostly have done now, we're going to apply a shade. So here we're using good old Trusty Agrax Earth Shade. You should all have this paint or a similar one in your arsenal. It's a very, very good paint. And if it's not skin and we've just painted it, we are going to pick out it in Agrax Earth Shade here now as well there too. So we're starting with the big bones and the fur on the back and then picking out any of the smaller areas. You can see that we drop down to a medium layer brush rather than the shade brush, because this is gonna give us a lot more control, especially when we're doing those bony protrusions there. You can see a couple around his arm. When we're picking those out, things like the teeth and the claws, so we really do want to avoid getting the skin, especially where it is got those piercings there too. We want that skin to be nice and light and green. We can already see it settling in the recesses here. And again, we want to keep an eye out, try and avoid that pooling, because that's something that's just going to leave a big brown blodge on the model, which we don't really want. Right, here's it all done, the shade's dry. So one of the nice things about batch painting is by the time you've painted it on the 20th model, as we've done here, you can see all in the background, it should be dry on the first model, so we can ready to move on to the next stage. Now they're looking pretty cool like this. This is what Games Workshop would class as battle ready, and then a bit more with the layers we're taking on the skin, but we're gonna take it further. So the next stage is some highlights. And here you can see we're highlighting the fur and we're using Dawnstone for that. Again, make sure you get those merkins in between the legs. So using the edge of the brush, just getting the raised areas of the fur, picking that out nice and gently. And we can see there you've got the darker colours towards the bottom with the shade and the Scaven Blight Dinge. So even though we've not used a lot there, a base coat, a shade and a highlight, we've got a really nice effect. Yeah, <laughs> he's looking good. 
Now next is another time consuming bit as we're going to be highlighting all those bony protrusions. So here we are using a shafty bone, just picking out the two kind of knobbly bits from the bone that's poking through his back there to start with. Always start with a nice large area if you can, keep a nice point on your brush. And the trick to this is we want to be leaving some of that darker colour and the shade in the shadows and just picking out the highlights there as well too. But again, really do take your time, especially on those small piercings. It's going to be worth the, the time and effort you're putting in for the effect you're going to get there too. If you're feeling brave, you can pick out the teeth, you can pick out the nails, and the claws as well there. They really are going to benefit from it as well too. Cheeky skull poking through the fur there which we're just picking up. So take your time, have a good look around all of the miniatures, because believe me, there are going to be a lot of bone here, but they are going to look good for it as well. And just keep a nice point on your brush and keep that point moving uh, away from the miniature. So if you push the paint brush towards the miniature, you run the risk of it flaying, and that's where mistakes happen. So with the bone all highlighted up, he's looking pretty sweet. To say there's a lot there on them. So next off we are now going to highlight the ropes and the bandages and the furs. We're going back to the grey seer and we're just using it to pick out the edges here. Now it's certainly worth doing this stage because this gives the definition which just separates that from the bones and helps give that different colour. So again we look like it's off-white a uh, whitish grey rather than an off-white whitish bone which does help the two different kind of textures and areas stand out there too. So again just using the edge of the brush picking out the raised areas let the model do the work for you and again take your time. There we go. A little bit more there on this arm. So have a good look around the miniatures, make sure you get everything. Some of them may have ropes around their waists as well. Um, there's all sorts of beautiful little details on these miniatures. It's certainly worth picking them up. So if you are enjoying this so far, Please let us know what bits you found useful in the comments. Uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe. It really, really will help the channel out, especially with us being a new YouTube channel. Look at that, it's looking good. So the next stage we do have camera, because I'll be honest, it's a bit of a ball ache, but we picked out the eyes using a small layer brush in Uriel Yellow. Again, if you're feeling brave, it's worth doing. It makes the world a difference. Next up, we're just going to highlight the wood. Now, there's really not a lot of wood on these. If you're painting the new Crypt Guard, a lot of them will have the wooden models for the Halberds. But we're using Steel Legion Drab, just on the edges of the dark wood colour here, the Dryad Bark, just to help pick out that wood texture a little bit more. And just to help yeah, make that look a bit more like wood. So there's not a lot of wood to them, so it wouldn't be a lot for this stage. And then with the lighter bits where it's been cut, we're going back to the Rakar Flesh, just doing a little edge highlight of those as well, just to get that looking a bit more sharper, a bit more defined, and just adding the highlights there too. It's a bit of the end where it's been cut, circular motion, just pick that out as well. Jobs are good. So now we are going to do the base. So I've got the Astro Granite here, and I'm using a texture spreader from Games Workshop. As you can see, I'm putting dollops on where the bases are nice and open and there's the space to do that. And then we're going to start spreading that out towards each other and then slowly towards the feet of the miniature. So we do want to try and avoid getting this on the feet. Um, it's not the end of the world if you do, but it just looks better if you can. Again, you've done a cool job picking out the skin there too. So we want people to see it. And there we are, just spreading that across. Now this does take a long time to dry as well, so again, this is where batch painting really plays to its strengths. And with that all done, you can probably see that I've glued some bits of slate onto the bases here too. 
and you might think why are you painting stone to look like stone for uh, the reason is because it helps disguise the scale and rather than looking like a bit of slate kind of stuck up from a garden glued to the base it actually looks like it's a, a boulder from the mortal realms or the 41st millennium there too i'm just using mechanica standard gray to pick this out because it's a really nice close match to the astro granite paint that we've used before and there we go And when those are all dry, we are now going to shade it. It does take a while for the texture paint to dry. So again, painting batches. We're using here good old trusty Norn Oil. Again, a paint that you should really have or something similar in your um, arsenal. It's a very, very useful paint. And we're just applying this over all of that textured area of the base. You can already see it's helped picking out the texture in the Astral Granite. And it's really helped picking out the texture in that slate as well there too. Just spread that around. Pooling is not so much of an issue here on the bases because we can use that to our advantage sometimes as well. So with that dry, we're going to add the next stage, which is a quick dry brush. We're using Dawnstone here, which is conveniently the same color we've highlighted the fur with. So it cuts down on the paint you're needing to pick up if you're buying uh, multiple paints for projects there too. And it's a very nice highlight to the Mechanica Standard Grey, especially with the shade over it. So we're using a large dry brush, we're using the corrugated card again, just to get a nice dry brush over that area there too. Now this one does have a bit of rock and stone in his hand as well. So if you have got any like that, make sure you do the dry brush in here as well to pick out that texture and add the highlights to that there too. Not all of them will, some of them do. There's some lovely details on these again. And there we go. Now we're very nearly done. I'm just going to give a very last quick dry brush of the Creed car key, which you can see in the video there, to lighten all that up. The base has been picked out in black, the rim. And now we're going to pick out any fleshy, muscly, sinewy bits. We're using a contrast paint here, and this is Flesh Terra's Red. So this one's pulling a bit of meat from the bone here between his teeth. So we're going to pick that out in contrast red. Um, some of the Crypt Horrors actually have exposed muscle sinew on their back and showing through. So you can use a contrast red on these there too. Which is a nice, gory, grizzly colour as well, which looks pretty cool. Right, now this next stage is one of my favourite bits. Totally skip it if you don't want to do the other two. So I've mixed up a glaze of 50-50 Druki Violet and Lamia Medium. I'm applying this just where the bones go through the skin on the skin areas where it's stretched to make that look bruised on any boils as well, any scars. And it does just give a really nice bruising, a really nice discolouring to that skin as well there too. So have a good look around the miniature. Any bits you feel may benefit from it. And there are quite a few stretches and bones there too. Uh, pop it on. Now, so you don't have to do this stage, but I think it really does make a lot of difference for a little effort. And I love this paint as well, so much so, I've mixed up a pot of this just by tipping some Lamy Medium and Druky Violet together, because it is one that I do use a lot. If you want to add a bit more kind of definition and pick those out a bit more, you can always add a second coat in areas to give that more of a bruising look and really accentuate that as well. Like we're doing on this scar on his butt cheeks. How he got that, it's probably best not to ask, eh? So it's not necessary, but I love this stage. I think it's a really nice touch. And speaking of stages that are unnecessary, but are a nice touch, we've mixed up another glaze. This one, we've got a yellow contrast. I think it's Nasdreg yellow, and you can use any one there. And then the Lamy and Medium, 50-50 mix again. And then any boils are just being picked out here and any sores, anything like that there too. So again, yellow adds a nice highlight to the skin. It makes it look a bit more sickly, uh, a bit more diseased. They've been running around in graveyards. They've been poking rotten bits of bone through their skin. They're gonna pick up the odd infection here and there too. So that just gives that a nice different discoloration. Now we're very nearly done. We're at the last stage now, and I've got some blood for the blood god. And this is a fun stage as well. We're just going to splatter this uh, liberally and nice and quick, as you can see, on any weapons the models are holding here. So it looks like they've clubbed their opponents to death there as well, too. We could put some splats going up the weapon shafts, up their arms as well. Here, we're putting it around the mouth. They're flesh eaters after all, so they've been eating some flesh. And this one, we're also going to pick out some when we've done the mouth around the hands as well there too. Looks like he's been ripping his opponent to shreds. 
So this is a lot of fun. You can use this as sparingly or as liberally as you like as well. This is totally down to your personal preference. I'm also putting some on the base here just to break up that gray a bit and doing it in blood splat patterns as well. If you do decide to do this, I would recommend doing this quite liberally and putting quite a bit on. This way it looks quite thick, quite congealed and gives that nice effect of like pools of blood dripping on the battlefield after the foes have been devoured and ripped to bits and been eaten. <laughs> and there we go. Bit more blood. Can't go wrong with a bit more blood. We're so close to the finish line now, guys. Thank you if you're still with us so far. Hopefully, we're ready for the grand reveal. You can tell it's coming up soon because it's gone all blue and shit the bed scary as we get ready to show you the batch painted flesh eater quartz. Mwahahaha! <laughs> 